The study was designed to test the effect of radiation on soldiers. It was known when the study began that the whole body radiation wouldn't treat the types of cancer these patients had. What happened here is one of the worst things this government has ever done to its citizens in secret. Dr. David Eagleman, a former instructor in family medicine at the University of Cincinnati. Physicians at the University of Cincinnati, led by Eugene Sanger and under contract from the Department of Defense, conducted total body or partial body radiation experiments in 90 patients with cancer between 1960 and 1972. Of the 90 patients, nearly 70% were black and their ages ranged from 9 to 84. Dr. Sanger acknowledged that the high radiation levels may have contributed to the death of 8 of the 90 patients. But in previous statements and reports, he asserted that the experiment's primary purpose was to treat the patient's cancer and incidentally to provide data to the Pentagon. A 1972 report by three University of Cincinnati junior faculty members who evaluated the experiment said that as many as a quarter of the patients died from the radiation. The Cincinnati study exposed patients to the highest levels of whole body radiation and, some experts say, probably caused the most deaths of all the known government-sponsored radiation experiments since World War II. The university experiment began in 1960 when the Pentagon accepted Dr. Sanger's proposal to study changes in the blood, urine, and mental alertness terminally ill cancer patients after all or part of their bodies had been exposed to high-dose radiation. Sanger, who was 43 at the time and the director of the university's radioisotope laboratory, hoped to develop a blood and urine test that would quickly and easily indicate a person's radiation exposure level. He told the Pentagon that such a test would be useful on the nuclear battlefield. The participants, most of them patients at the Cincinnati General Hospital, a public hospital, did not start signing releases until 1965 when the government directed universities to tighten procedures for human experimentation. As years passed, the consent forms became more rigorous, but as was common practice at the time, they never disclosed the name of the experiment sponsor, which in this case was the Pentagon. Documents show most patients were exposed to radiation once for roughly an hour, with up to 300 reds equal to 20,000 chest x-rays and enough to cause 48 of the 90 patients to develop nausea, vomiting, anorexia, abdominal pain, and mental confusion. In summaries to the Pentagon, Dr. Sanger said patients were not to be informed. The patient is told that he is to receive treatment to help his sickness. There is no discussion of subjective reactions resulting from the treatment. Other physicians, nurses, and ward personnel are instructed not to discuss these aspects with the patient. By subjective symptoms, he meant vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, weakness, and mental confusion. Dr. Sanger wrote, do not ask the patient whether he has these symptoms. So patients were not given antiemetic drugs to alleviate the painful effects of the radiation. Also for fear that such a practice would reduce the value of the findings for the Department of Defense. In January of 1994, the Cincinnati experiments were reviewed by the Advisory Committee on Human Radiation Experiments, a task force formed by President Clinton that eventually identified 4,000 human radiation experiments sponsored by the federal government between 1944 and 1974. Patients with solid tumor cancers, lung, colon, breast, were selected. Researchers wanted people with stable blood cell counts and body weight. In later years, attempts were made to add more white people to the study and to include younger, healthier cancer patients who could participate in follow-up research. The patients were exposed to total body radiation as high as 200 rad or partial body radiation up to 300 rad. The military interest in the different doses was to predict the effect of soldiers and civilians who may have had some cover during a nuclear attack. 
After giving the radiation, researchers looked for signs of vomiting, diarrhea, and loss of appetite. They tracked blood cell counts and took frequent urine samples. Some patients went through a battery of psychological tests. Not only were medical staff ordered not to warn patients about side effects the researchers wanted to study, in a deliberate attempt to prevent subjects from discussing their treatment, some patients were kept in rooms away from the tumor ward, where most cancer patients stayed. On May 5th of 1999, a settlement was announced in which most families were awarded $50,000 each and a dozen others $85,000, but the defendants admitted no wrongdoing. This report I received today is a monumental document in more ways than one. But it is a very, very important piece of America's history and it will shape America's future in ways that will make us a more honorable, more successful and more ethical country. What this committee learned I would like to review today with a little more detail than Dr. Faden said, because I think it must be engraved on our national memory. Thousands of government-sponsored experiments did take place at hospitals, universities, and military bases around our nation. The goal was to understand the effects of radiation exposure on the human body. While most of the tests were ethical by any standards, some were unethical, not only by today's standards, but by the standards of the time in which they were conducted. They failed both the test of our national values and the test of humanity. Informed consent means your doctor tells you the risk of the treatment you are about to undergo. In too many cases, informed consent was withheld. Americans were kept in the dark about the effects of what was being done to them. The deception extended beyond the test subjects themselves to encompass their families and the American people as a whole. For these experiments were kept secret, and they were shrouded not for a compelling reason of national security, but for the simple fear of embarrassment. And that was wrong. So today, on behalf of another generation of American leaders, and another generation of American citizens, the United States of America offers a sincere apology to those of our citizens who were subjected to these experiments, to their families, and to their communities. When the government does wrong, we have a moral responsibility to admit it. The duty we owe to one another to tell the truth and to protect our fellow citizens from excesses like these is one we can never walk away from. Our government failed in that duty, and it offers an apology to the survivors and their families, and to all the American people who must, who must be able to rely upon the United States to keep its word, to tell the truth, and to do the right thing. Make no mistake, as the committee report says, there are circumstances where compensation is appropriate as a matter of ethics and principle. I am committed to seeing to it that the United States of America lives up to its responsibility. Our greatness is measured not only in how we so frequently do right, but also how we act when we know we've done the wrong thing, how we confront our mistakes, make our apologies, and take action. That's why this morning I signed an executive order instructing every arm and agency of our government that conducts, supports, or regulates research involving human beings to review immediately their procedures in light of the recommendations of this report and the best knowledge and standards available today and to report back to me by Christmas.